My dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here to celebrate the funeral of Fran. Though we are sad and grieving, we have faith that the bonds of love and affection that unite us together through life do not break with death. All that Fran meant to us is still true and our love for her as real as ever. In our prayer today, we not only remember Fran, but also those mourning her passing. We remember her children, Francine, Anthony and Paul, and her daughters-in-law, Jody and Emma. We also remember her grandchildren, Anthony, Thomas, Frankie and Mila, her special nephew, Daniel, her sisters, Anne and Michelle, her brothers, Tony, Vincent, Tex, Michael, Kevin and Bernard, and all the rest of her family and friends. Today we ask that Fran may receive the reward of her goodness in the kingdom of heaven. And so let us pray. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Fran, whom you have called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, Command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, Fran's niece Gemma is going to do our first reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The, Lord, the words of the Lord. And now as our psalm, we listen to the hymn, Be Still and Know I Am With You. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When, in conjunction with her family, I chose the readings for Fran's funeral today, I chose them with her family in mind. The aim of a Christian funeral is to balance the person who has sadly died with those left behind mourning. It's obviously personal to the loved one who has died, while still aiming to comfort those of us who are left behind. Though sadly I didn't have the pleasure of meeting Fran from her family, I did get a clear impression of the sort of person she is. And that impression is above all that she is a lady of faith. The stories that her family told me of her, of her desire to attend the baptism of her two grandsons that I did only ten days ago, of her desire to have a specific set of rosary breeds brought to her in hospital, and then having them replaced by the kindness of a nurse that noticed that this was important to her, all tell me a great deal about Fran. And knowing this shaped the choice of readings for her funeral. I realised that Fran would want the faith that sustained her during her life to be a comfort now, now that we're facing a life without her. The readings at a Christian funeral form a fundamental part of what we do today. The church has over 2,000 years of history and we turn to that wisdom for guidance as we face the inevitable sorrow that bereavement brings. The first reading this morning was taken from one of St Paul's letters and is typically blunt and direct. St Paul tells his readers that Christians are not to grieve for their loved ones as if they had no hope. The way that Fran lived her life shows that she was full of faith, and so we're called to trust in that same faith as we face a life without her. St Paul tells us that it's the Lord's own teaching while on earth that guarantees what he promises, and that this promise should comfort and console us at this sad and difficult time. <coughs> then in the Gospel reading we hear from Jesus himself telling his followers not to let their hearts be troubled by the sadness of grief. At this time, we cherish those words because they provide what nothing else can, hope for the future and the prospect of being reunited with Fran. For the final hymn today, her family have chosen How Great Thou Art. This includes the lines, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Now that the Lord has taken Fran home, we cherish the hope that joy has filled her heart, and we look forward to the day when, please God, we're all reunited in the peace and the joy of our eternal home. And I now invite another of Fran's nieces, Sarah, to lead us in our bidding prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for the 72 happy years we spent with Frances. The laughter and the love that she shared with everybody will remain in our hearts forever. Lord, in your mercy. Dear, our Dear Lord, we ask you to take care of her loving family, her brothers and sisters, 
in nephews and nieces, and all, all of her many relatives and friends whose lives will deeply be deeply affected by, the, by her loss. We pray to you to give them the strength that they will need to carry on with their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray to you to keep Frances safe within your arms, to care for her as we would have, cherish her as we would have, and always protect her. We pray for all who bear the cross of pain in mind and body, that they may never be forsaken. Lord, in your mercy. Dear, Dear Lord, we ask you to watch over everyone who Frances loves so deeply, her children, Francine, Anthony and Paul, her daughter-in-laws, Jodie and Emma, her cherished grandchildren, Daniel, Anthony, Thomas, Frankie and Mila. We pray to you that they may be consoled in their grief and to guide them safely and to give them the strength that they will need throughout their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Pray in silence for a few moments for Fran. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Fran. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servant, Fran, and purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through you, through your, for through you, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Fran, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant Fran, that cleansed by the Easter mysteries, she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 